Hey, yo, this is the Zista. And Natalak. And we just jumped off the porch. My fucking right. The dirty glove bastard. Church. Someone always got something to say. Is he gay? Is he real about what he say? Is his taxes paid? All right, so we got the one and only Natalak jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, man. I feel welcome. And it's Natalak. Natalak. You got to say it like... Yeah, they yeah. put the twang on it, right? Yeah, you got to put them three A's in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If any other word that start with N and it's seven letters and it's got three A's in it, I think I'm the only name in there. <laughs> Natalak. Yeah. Welcome, bro. How you feeling today, man? Man, I'm feeling great, man. The world is mine. Yeah. For sure, man. Uh, you got anything else planned while you're here in Atlanta? Are you just in and out with it, or what, what's going on? Yeah, I'm in and out like a robbery. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, but you know, it's just what I do. Yeah. You know, not like a robbery. I ain't taking nobody else shit. I might take your broad from you. You know what I'm saying? Now, that might be a problem, because if she choose me, and she didn't choose you, you lose. <laughs> All right, so uh, it looks like we got Benzino on the porch joining you, uh, Lack. Church. Man, listen, man, this is my brother here. You know what I'm saying? I come to support the bro. And plus, I've been looking forward to come on the porch for a long time. Oh, that's love right See, there. See, I'm bro. comfortable. This is, just, this is exactly what I'll be doing. All my shit be right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, blow me up some weed. So, you know what I mean? Sure. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, I understand you guys have been rocking with each other for a while, right? Oh, yeah. How yeah. did that relationship start off then? How did happen, man? Uh, I, th I think we, we, we didn't meet in Jacksonville. We met in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, wow. <laughs> we met while we were both on the road, you know, doing our things. And you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a real artist, you know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the best time to get features is when they're on the road. They want to make some more dough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what you do is say, hey, man, look, work something out with me. Let me go ahead and pay you. I got the studio ready. You got to be ready to move, make moves. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? We did the song, and then... Uh, oh, that's right, yeah, that's when we... Um, they had a studio up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and uh, we was at the same spot, and after that, we went to the studio and made the song. That's, that's right. That's when I met him, yeah. Huh. So, yeah. So that how was, do we go from, you know, just paying the feature to building up a relationship like you guys have going now? We just click. For real? Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, we both, you know, we, we both come from that same, you know, that older generation, so right, you know, right then and there, we start having conversation, and you know, and, and, and really start. Um, the one thing I noticed about Natalak is that, you know, like he, he's like in, in Jacksonville, he's, you know, he's known out there. Like people know him and in South Carolina. So he got a following out there. So he's really with the whole independent artist movement. Hmm. And I do a lot of bookings with like, um, where I be hosting like showcases and stuff. So, uh, you know, like when I go on the road, I'm usually meeting guys a lot younger than me. But Natalak, you know, was, was a lot closer to my age. I'm older than Natalak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you, you, know, you can't tell it. No, no, no. No, but I'm saying we just clicked. It was just a click. And ever since then, man, he's a great guy. You know what I'm saying? Serious about his, his, his career. And being two older guys in the industry, you know, it, you, you know, I be trying to keep Natalak, you know what I'm saying? And like <laughs> with that youthful, you know, with that youthful type of motion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, Ever since then, man, ever since that we, man, we met, we just had like a, a really solid relationship, man. And, you know, he can call me for anything, anytime. Oh, shit. Oh, that's love, man. Word. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure, we was in Detroit together, man. You gotta <laughs> tell him about that, man. Yeah, because he, he made a cameo in your video, right, Zeno? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we went out. I mean, you know, shit, Natalak's always, when, the, when like I said, we went on tour together. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, a while ago. I had a tour I was going on, and I asked Natalak, I said, Natalak, man, I said, come on. I said, if you want to come on, and you open up. And he was like, yeah, hell yeah. And we did about, maybe about seven, 50. eight cities. Was it seven, about seven, eight cities? I thought it was more than that. Oh, I, don't, I don't know, you know what I mean? Because let me tell you something, one thing about getting older, you know what I'm saying, you, got, <laughs> you remember the shit that, and, and, and that you can remember. Yeah, yeah. But we went on the road, and uh, that, that even got us closer, man. So um, anytime I get a chance to like, you know, let Natalak come through and get some motion, man. I'll call him and be like, yo, what's up, bro? I got some shit going on. You want to you know, come through? Word. I got to tell you something about this dude. Go ahead. This oh, dude shit. is a... <laughs> Here we go. This dude, man, listen, he gives a lot hmm. to, I mean, perfect strangers. Like, 
he the part he leaving out was is I when he asked me about you know about going you to go this and that first thing I I said hey can I bring uh boss money who's also on that new single we talking mm -hmm. and he was like shit he cool with you he cool with me let's go and I was, just now, like that huh yeah now the average dude is not gonna just you know lay out their platform and let you tap dance all on that crap you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You get, you know what I'm saying? They they be weary about trusting people and everything else, but Benzino ain't like that. No, that's, that's why he it. can go anywhere in this country. He be in every hood. I be, I didn't seen this shit. People were talking about you can't come to Detroit. I watched this dude all, and people think he did the uh, the rap Elvis and bounce. Hell no. We cut. He two, was out there for a few days, right? Like a, a, week. Week. a week. A week. <laughs> Listen, cut two videos, yo, and went all in mad. Like I said. He a real man of the people. I, 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 that's what I like about him. Yeah. He, I, I mean, I love the hood. Like, I love the hood. I love, I love anything about the hood. Like, and when I go in spots, the same thing. And like, when I see my man right here, who was in the, you know what I'm saying? When I see homie in the gas station just now, it was like about four or five people and they all show love. Hmm. And that shit mean more to me than, than, than anything. Yeah. Like, it really is the hood love that I really, um, I'm, um, I'm blessed with and I'm proud of, you know, cause you know, that's like, people don't realize, like, you know, I came up in the late 70s, early 80s, and I, I was really in the streets at 12, 13. And since then, that was my entire life. And um, that's what I, that, you know, I'm more comfortable, and that's around, you know what I'm saying? Um, Real niggas. Stuff that I grew up around, and mm -hmm. stuff that I grew up in, the people that I grew up in, the type of people, not, and it doesn't have to mean a race or anything, it's just, you know, I, I, I come up from struggle, and when you're in the hood, struggle for a kid is a beautiful thing. It just looks beautiful. It's fun. It's happiness. It ain't, it don't look, it's not bad. You know, one thing about, I think, the culture is we make struggle good and fun and, and worthwhile. And, you know, though some of that shit is, you know, um, criminal activities, but that's what's in the hood and that's what's in yeah. struggle. So I just feel more comfortable around it. That's why I love this shit so much because it really takes me back to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real blessing to still receive that type of love, you know, what, 30, 40 years into this shit. Man. Yeah, it don't stop. It's even more now than ever. Like, <laughs> it's even more now than ever. And, like, um, it's crazy, you know. Like, my journey's been a crazy journey. But one thing about it, it's been consistent on me fucking with the hood. <laughs> no matter what, my highs, my ups, my lows, my dad doesn't matter. No matter what, I can always go through the hood and somebody, and, you know, when they, it's like, it's a different type of um, type of thing. I don't look at them as like fans and all. It's like I look at them like we've known each other forever, or like we've lived on the same block forever, or like I'm part of their family. So when they see me, they smile, and it'd be like older women. They'd be like Benzino, and they'll have their daughter, and their daughters would know Coy, my daughter. They'd be like, "That's Benzino's dad." They'd be like, no, that's Benzino. It, it's <laughs> it's a blessing, man. Like God is good, you know. I I don't take it for granted. Yeah. So trending topic, Lack. Talk about this new single you guys just put out, man. Man, first off, man, uh, I got to give uh, Zeno his props. He found the videographer. I ain't have to do nothing but show up and pour up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Were you even planning to shoot it there in Detroit, or was it just kind of a uh, spur of the moment? No, we, we had talked about it. He said, man, we got to shoot this in Detroit, Nedelec. We got to shoot this in Detroit. I was like, shit, let's do it. Hmm. You know, so. I'm real spontaneous about shit. Yeah. That's the only time it really comes out dope. Like, I never plan nothing. Like, have I ever planned, like, you know, maybe a couple of days or whatever, but most of the shit that's ever happened in my life, it just, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm just ready for it, you know? Yeah. Doors are going to open up for everybody. You just got to be ready when they open. Real shit. That part, yeah. very true. Yeah. And the, the song, Trending Topic, the name says enough. You're looking at the trending topic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, the way Zeno do his thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you know, on the ism side of what I do, I'm definitely a trending topic, you know? And we just kind of link this joker together. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I get a lot of pointers from him. Like, mm. my last two albums, he named them jokers. Oh, really? Yeah. I, he, was, he was asking me, he said, man, Natalie, like, you need to come on and love <laughs> loving hip hop, loving hip hop. I'm like, man, I'm not that tight, though. I'm loving pimp <laughs> hop. You know what I'm saying? That was his first album. Yeah, yeah. That was the first album that uh, mm -hmm. uh, me and uh, a Zeno collab was on. So we were, I, so after that, he named that album. 
Then we started doing music together and this and that, and we was on the phone together. He was like, I, I mentioned something about some uh, trending topic, you know, because like he, at the time he was already the trending topic, talking about uh, some of the beefs and this and that. And I said, man, we need to come up with a song called Trending Topic. So, so that's what happened. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we here. Yeah. yeah, we, we use the, the same producer. Yeah, <laughs> we. Yo, I dropped some under the porch. Hold on. Yeah. Uh oh. I dropped. I dropped my weed tip under the porch. Oh, sure. oh, there you go. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it has to do. Too, you have to get a stick. Yeah, I got a broom you can use. That's just. See, this would be the stick. That the broom in the yard, right? <laughs> Listen, we got to sweep off the porch. We got to sweep off. No, the no, porch. no, no, no. I got the broom in the yard. Word. I got the dog chained up right over there. <laughs> so, you know, chill the fuck out, man. Hold up. It's just what we have to do. <laughs> No, no, he's there too. He's chilling right now. Mm -hmm, that. Which camera got it, guys? Okay. Get back up on You can't make this stuff up. Spontaneous. This shit. Unedited right here, man. You know it. what I'm saying? Just yeah. keep the camera Hey, rolling. tell him I'll be back. Just pick me up so Yeah. All right. So, Lack, let's go ahead and dive into your story, man. So, from the north side of Jacksonville, right? Yep. Man, so everything I know about Jacksonville is the north side. It's really like that, man. Man, let me, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. I done been in Sherwood on the north side since 1974. I've been rapping for, since who knows when. No bang, bang, shootout, this and that, somebody mad, this and that. A lot of times when you, you, you get these new rappers, man, either you lying or you're capping about something, you done ran off on the plug twice because you done heard his pliers mention something like that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these dudes create these problems for themselves. Cause <laughs> like I said, no problems yet. My whole trunk company is on the north side. So you can't tell me what it is. It's, it, it's, it's you. It's you. you. You do all that fugazi capping crap. <laughs> now, Jacksonville ain't going to play with you now. They'll fill you full of bullets, especially if you done ran off on the plug twice. You know what I'm saying? You can't be doing that. <laughs> you ain't finna, you're going to have to move. So uh, it's a lot of rappers that have to leave the town. Hmm. You know, they, they represent Jacksonville from afar. Hmm. <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, man, I ain't going nowhere, man. What, my why, whole family in Jacksonville. Is that why you're still in Jacksonville then? Because your family's still there or? Yeah, my whole, my whole family's on the north side. Cousins, aunties, everybody. So when they be talking about, man, north side, you, you don't want to go there. Man, I got what? 10, I got all my family over there. My mom's people and everybody else, cousins and all, you know. So I put it like this, I can't co-sign that. I do know this, you, sure, you can get hit with a body full of bullets in Atlanta if you're running off reckless. Mm -hmm. so I think that's in any city, yeah. Yeah, you, you can get it anywhere. Yeah. So that's my take on that, man. Okay. Uh, what, did you join the Marines right after high school or when did you uh, go ahead and enlist? Yeah, I, I volunteered in the middle of the war, right? At, you know. <laughs> Sit in the middle of the war. Yeah, it was, I wasn't serious. It, Desert Storm, Desert Shield in Somalia hmm. was going on, and everybody was like, you sure you want to go now? I said, shit, I'm ready. I was born in Sherwood. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sherwood for life. Huh. <laughs> so what was your experience? Like, I guess you were most likely deployed over then, right? Well, believe it or not, I didn't get deployed because okay. of, because of uh, my mom went to this small town church it was small like church it was like a holiness type of church so when i went in there and i was asking for a triumph the church and kingdom of god in christ and it was like what 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 religion what type of church is that and then it was one of the uh the black marines in boot camp they said i know where i'm taking you so he took me to this muslim meeting and mm -hmm. you know and guys in the back and they was doing all this and stuff like that that was the only muslim service that they had that i went to but after that, they put Muslim on my dog tag. So then I think that had a lot to do with me not being able oh, to wow. go. It's because I was gung-ho, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was on the football field, ran track. I was Mr. Atlas for my, uh, my, my high school, all that stuff. I was ready, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to go. Yeah. But nope, I ended up staying in the States, and they trained the hell out of me. I ended up going to Camp Cooker Brother in Yuma, Arizona. 130 degrees in the summertime, oh, 80 shit. degrees in the winter. So we trained year round. So I, you know, I was always in the desert, in the field, shaking out my boots from 
uh, scorpions and, you know, watching out for sidewinders and stuff like that. I was outside. I was really outside and it wasn't no porch. <laughs> so. So how many years did you do in the, in I did, the Marines then? I did one enlistment, you know what I'm saying? The Two, four, four in the dough, bro. Okay. You okay. know, I was, I, but every generation of my family done did that. Oh, really? Dating back all the way to, uh, to the, really before the, the Civil War. My dad was in Vietnam, my granddad in World War II. His father was in the Spanish-American War, and the one before him was a runaway slave that got caught in a Fort Negro where Andrew Jackson blew up the compound, and he got bought by Master Davis out of, uh, out of South Carolina in Graniteville, and that's where my family started. Oh, that's where the last name Davis came from. Hmm. So, True. But only two or four years, and we out. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't getting no 20. Nah. <laughs> And then you come home and you get your trucking license, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I, I started trucking then. Okay. And, uh, you know, and, and I stayed into that like 15, 16, 17 years. Zeno got a friend named uh, Ronnie Real that we talk about trucking all the time, but I, I was a company guy for like 15, 16 years. Then I started my own trucking company, got my own truck, and, and then it was all gravy, baby. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was paying myself to go wherever I go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I get a show in uh, Chicago, I book a load to Chicago. So I pay myself going there. I get paid on stage and I pay myself to leave. Thank you for the travel pay because it went right into diesel fuel. And you're pulling up to the venue in the truck, right? Well, I either park at the, I'll either park at the truck stop and get picked up or I would drop the trailer and drive you know, and, and, and take the bobtail and pull up. Now, I'm pulled up to plenty of clubs like that. <laughs> You what know? type of reactions do you get then when you pop it out? Probably looking like this too, right? Oh yeah, I get out. I, I did that at uh, Magic Bishop Don Juan's Players Ball when they had it in Atlanta and stuff like that. I jumped out with the white mink and all that stuff. And um, when I was on tour with uh, Akinelli and Super Bossa Nova and Mr. Smith, aka Boss Money, and uh, DJ, uh, what's that dude's name? Uh, DJ Luke Nasty. We was all on tour together. And everybody, uh, the, the younger guy said, man, that like, why are you driving this truck, man? Why don't you just, you, you can ride with me in the Rolls Royce, the double R, this and that. And you could, or I can tell it was like, you could ride with me in the Winnebago. And I broke it down to him. I said, listen, your vehicle costs a quarter of a million dollars. Your vehicle costs a quarter of a million dollars. And to be honest, my truck and trailer costs a quarter of a million dollars. The difference is you spent $30, $40 in gas to get here. I made $2,000 coming here. <laughs> That's the difference between the way I roll and the way you roll. Hmm. So I'm always working. I don't quit my day job. Yeah. Did you always have this type of uh, hustling spirit then? Like well, it came even when my... you were growing up and all that or? Oh yeah. My dad was a slave driver, yo. He, hey, he, he, he always, he always pushed that. You know what I'm saying? Like when I started rapping, he told me in the nineties, he would say, you really want to do this, son? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, don't quit your day job. So I never quit my day job. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I got my paper straight. I'm able to do things I need to do, go places I need to go, you know, and just keep getting it. So what inspired you to say, man, let me go ahead and become a rapper then? Well, I mean, I, 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 I was rapping since I was a kid, but okay. I wasn't investing money in it. I wasn't, you know, taking it serious or whatever like that. You know, I'm just rapping around with a bunch of kids and my brothers and cousins and stuff because we all in Sherwood. You know what I'm saying? We would ride out in my, uh, my Cadillac with the hydraulics and stuff, you know. So we would get drunk, you know, and, you know, with, uh, with my cousins, Joe Campbell and this and that. And we would always be rapping. We always be rapping, you know. And then I said, man, you know, I might well invest some money in this. Hmm. I got a little bit. <coughs> and go at it. Yeah. And at that time, were there like any big rappers from Jacksonville at that time? Well, I mean, the, 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 only, the only rapper that was really big was the 69 Boys. But okay, I, yeah. I, but I think, I think he left and went to Orlando afterwards. You know, he didn't stay. A lot of times people grow up in a certain area and they get big and they, they go somewhere else, I guess, you know, that's better suited for them. Like a lot of rappers leave and come to Atlanta. They say, man, it's Atlanta, I need to go there. Me, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm staying right there in my hood. I'm going to represent it forever. Yeah. When you say north side of Jacksonville, you need to say Natalac right yeah. along with it. Yeah. 
And I remember catching the uh, the Pimp of the City video on BET Uncut. <laughs> Talk about that video. Church, a lot of people don't know that that video was actually cut in Columbia, South Carolina in a strip club I ran. And those were the girls I was running with. and. And it became the fifth most popular video of BET Uncut history. So that means I beat out Ludacris, 50 Cent, all of them, you know what I'm saying? On an independent budget, you know what I'm saying? And, and virtually- Nelly, Nelly, remember Nelly, I'm saying shit was right there with Nelly shit. Yeah, he was number yeah. one now. Yeah. That's, that's why I say fifth. <laughs> <laughs> he was number one. I, I had a joint on it too. It was, I remember that's the first time I seen your joint. They had, they had played both of them. We didn't even know each other, both of our joint. I had a joint called Bellatoma and um, I filmed in Miami. And that's the first time I've ever seen you was when, was when um, um, BT uncut and I was like, you know, and I, be, and I was like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? I was like, who's that? You know what I mean? Yeah, because when the first time I seen that, like, you know, I mean, I mean the pimp shit. I've been known about pimps for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I've been known, you know, when you think about it, pimps and hip hop really go hand in hand, like rapping, because when you really a pimp, you really, you really rapping without music. You really spitting our compel when you listen. Um, to Slim, you know what I'm saying? What's, what's my man? You know what I'm saying? Um, Who are you talking um, about, Professor Hotester? No, 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 not Ho no, no, no. I'm talking about big man out in San Francisco. Oh, uh, I'm talking about Slim. Ice, Pete? Iceberg, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Iceberg, Iceberg Slim. Iceberg Slim. Like you ever get a chance to listen to Iceberg Slim? Just his his lingo. Iceberg Slim's like rapping. That was years ago. Hmm. Like all Word. those guys, they got a style about they the way they talk, and it really was like it, it was in tune with hip hop without Word. even knowing it. Fillmore Slim. Fillmore Slim. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Fillmore Phil Slim. Slim. We that's love you, brother. Saying, yeah. You yeah. heard? I'm yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's Clarence. What's mm -hmm. up, Clarence? Because <laughs> you know we we all go to these players ball together. Okay. Yeah. I I actually run the Facebook page, the United Pimps of America. Hmm. Shout out to my group, the Keep It Ism. Church. What's the atmosphere like at these players balls? It's beautiful. <laughs> Ain't nobody getting shot. Everybody's dressed fly. You know what I'm saying? You got to be part of the game. You know what I'm saying? The way I'm dressed is the way we show up. So ain't finna be no fights. And the girls show up. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Seems like now the, with the girls fight seems though? like the pimps respect no, each other no. on a whole different level though. Hmm. The respect they have for one another, the respect that, okay, he's a pimp. Right. They, it's like, you know, it really is like a, cause I just be sitting back watching, you know what I'm saying? Just like, I could never be a pimp. I don't got the patience to be a pimp. Hmm. You gotta have patience. You know what I'm saying? And you got to, you got to, I can only really deal with one chick at a time, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? There's no way I could be able to deal with like five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten chicks. So, yeah. I, I got my own way of dealing with them. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I got two rules. How, oh. how, how many girlfriends you got right now? Oh, 15. 15. 15. <laughs> yeah. I got two rules, man. Two rules. You can either leave or stay. Anything else <laughs> going my way. You know what I'm saying? I, if I get a no, I, I don't talk shit, to you no man. more that day. Hmm. If, 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 <laughs> if they be blowing the phone up, ring, 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 I answer it 24 hours later to the time on the clock. <laughs> and I said, hey, baby, how you doing? She said, hey, baby, how you doing? I've been calling you all day. You ain't pick up the phone. And I easily say, I said, well, see, you told me no. <laughs> and the next time you tell me no, it's going to be three days. No again, a week. See, what I'm doing is I'm clearing out the bull crap. See, I would rather you leave early. I don't need to be with you five, 10 years and, and my house going up in flames and all my cars burn up and everything else. I ain't, gotta, I ain't gotta do that. I only deal with women who want me. I don't chase nobody. That's why they pay a choosing fee. That's why they choose. You choosing me, I'm not choosing you. Some of the coldest rappers are pimps, I'm telling you. I'm saying I want to do it. I'm surprised no one ain't done like a whole acapella album of all the coldest, all of them. Oh, that'd be hard. Don Juan, Pimpin' Cam, I mean, all of them. You know what I'm saying? My man Chill Will from Boston, Comfort. I mean, when you think about these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as drip, they stay drip. Like, the players ball, just alone, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, he came to his first suits, players ball. Shoes, you know what I'm saying? Like, they really pay attention to this. You know, I'd be pep, you know what I'm saying? I give. I give just do, you know, just do, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a whole different level. Word. He, hey, what, matter of fact, it was Ben Zeno, the chap from 3-6 Mafia, I love you, you know? It was uh, Pastor Troy and the DSG boys and Cadillac Davis and 
a couple of other players and uh, Ronnie Real. They all came to the Natalak Players Ball that I threw in Columbia, South Carolina. Hmm. Flies, I don't know what. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, word. Yeah, man. So, well, I mean, that's what it's really about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why you, you know what I'm saying? Get dressed, get cleaned up, drink, smoke, have a good time. You know ain't nobody going after you. And they ain't, you know, and you ain't going after nobody. And you then, know what I'm saying? Then go home and fuck. There you go. <laughs> like, what else, you, what else you really want to do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? They just want to fight all you. Ah, ah, ah. Go home and fuck, bro. Yeah, I have to. I'll be. I'll be honest. You know what I'm saying. I can't go through all them bras no more. I, you know, I, hey, one hit a quitter. Good night, bitch. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Don't touch me no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I say you need to go on another date or something if you still want to. You know, you can get bread and you know, and who knows, you get the right trick. You get some head too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but leave me alone. <laughs> yes. So, like, going back to the pimp of the city video. You know, it's rumored that your likeness was kind of inspired uh, by the character on the Boondocks. That's correct. That's in the Urban Dictionary. You know, the Boondocks started, right? Did mm -hmm. you know? Was it? Source Magazine. Get the fuck out. That's Man, why we know. click on everything. It, it, <laughs> it was a comic strip. They got their first shot in Source Magazine. It was really? a comic strip, yeah. I just want to throw that nugget in there. What did you think of it when you first were, did someone pitch it to you? It was or? dope as fuck. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was it, no, I mean, me, I grew up reading the funnies. That's how old I am. So you get the Sunday paper and you're reading all the funnies. You ain't seeing nobody in the culture in the funnies on Sunday, on the Sunday papers. <laughs> Man, thank so you. So when it came in, when it came, <laughs> it was dope because it really represented the culture. It was, and then when I say it in cartoon form, oh, man, I couldn't believe it. Just in, 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 in like where it came from, so I don't want to cut, but go ahead. Yeah, oh, no, so. go ahead, go no, ahead. No, 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 I need to hear that. that. that man, that I didn't even know it. I'm yeah, sitting yeah, there, right I talk to you yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Boondock started in the Source magazine. That's oh, shit. Hey, so, beautiful. So, like, what's your reaction, uh, you know, when you start seeing a pimp named Slickback in the cartoon then? Well, I know why they said Slickback. Natalak. <laughs> Duh. And uh, it was the same, you know, the, the pimp, uh, the, the purple the suit and this and that, and mysteriously, you know what I'm saying? I, I put it like this. Somebody sent me the, uh, the link. They said the uh, Urban Dictionary. And they said Natalak on it. Somebody sent me the link. They said, Nat, man, they using your image. This motherfucker look just like you. I'm like, huh? And I look at him. I said, damn sure do. To the T. And when they, when they, so when they did that, I was like, well, shit, I'm going to capitalize off that shit. So I dropped the album called A Pimp Named Slickback, That's Natalak. And I had uh, 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 David Hobbs, uh, Mr. Mix of the Two Live Crew, do the beat. And we named that song like Peter Wheat Straw. And we did uh, A Max Life with Hayes Carolina. And, and, you know, I put out a little EP. So that was one album I never had to promote. I, all I had to do was collect. And I was like, church. Thank you. <laughs> Did you ever reach out to try and be compensated for, you know, your likeness being used? Well, no, because it gave me free advertisement on my record. Do you know what that does? <laughs> Whenever I say, yeah, I'm a pimp named Slickbag and they already see the shit. And they like, Motherfucker, I'm buying this. You know what I'm saying? Or downloading and all that other type of shit. And shout out to Dolomite Records and all. Uh, and the late uh, Rudy Ray Moore, because it was a clip on there, you know, a sample on there that was cleared for them people hmm. that uh, DJ Mr. Mix did for me and shit. So, nah, I don't, I'm not really a wave maker. You know what I'm saying? I'm a way maker, not a wave maker. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a song called Child Support Pimp that was, that's over 20 years old. When I kept hearing guys complain about child support, man, this bitch breaking me, breaking me, breaking me. I said, listen, man. I'm gonna show you how to get out of paying child support. And I ain't talking about going downtown. First thing you gotta do is get the fuck out your feelings. Get out of your feelings. If a bitch costs you money, you done crossed the line. You done violated, seriously. So if you get with a broad and you already on child support, fine. Get with a chick who's receiving child support, you either break even or you're gonna make more money. Fuck the bullshit. You gotta, you gotta pimp this game. Don't get mad. Make a change. You feel what I'm saying? You might be paying $500 a month, $1,000 a month. You get with a chick, that bitch might be bringing in $2,000 a month. What you complaining for? Just get out of your feelings. Because if you cost me money, 
I'm through with you. You cost me some of my dough, you got to go. You feel what I'm saying? That's a good game right there. Bruh, it's the pimping. You got, listen, you got to have the thought pattern. Like the song I got with uh, Sugar Free, uh, Bitches and Money and Cocaine. <coughs> That's what I was talking about in, in, my, in my verse and shit. So. How did that connection happen, you and Sugar Free? Well, because of cocaine. Cocaine <laughs> is the one that did. I was, I was talking with cocaine, and while I was on the phone well, with him. You thought it was because he was. <laughs> At first, I sounded, right? my mind went like, wow. that. He thought he, I was like, oh, shit. Of cocaine, like, we got fucked up one day and <laughs> no. decided to. <laughs> Don't talk about up. the cocaine with a K. The no, artist I, cocaine. I'm okay, the artist. He's dope too. I've been fucking with no, cocaine. I'm familiar with him, yeah. Yeah, I, I was on the phone with him. I copped him for a feature and shit. And uh, I said, all right, man, I got to reach out to Sugar Free. He was like, man, don't worry about that. I got you. I got you. And he jumped on that shit. Yeah, I didn't even have to fly out there, none of that shit. That's so it. I put it like this. In this game, it's about relationships. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you be a good dude, shit quick. good happen to you. If you do a whole time. lot of wobble eye shit, they're going to be looking for you at Face the rest time. stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I'm cool with people. I treat people the way I want to be treated. So that's why I roll like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See? I'm on that's set. all I can say. Yeah. You know what? See, I'm on um, set with it. Look. The concept for the music video stacks. Look. Can you break this down for us? Oh, that was easy. My money. <laughs> Ain't nobody finna tell me to get the hell out of a bank. If it's my money, is it? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, that shit ain't finna happen. Shout out to biggest, uh, Buck TV, a, right? uh, Big A, who actually cut the video. You know what I'm saying? I went and made a withdrawal from the bank, used my <laughs> own money, and threw it around, and turned that shit right on back in. <laughs> That's probably what a lot of rappers is doing, if it ain't prop money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They sit around and play with the money. Man, yeah, man, got all this money. Then the mortgage, the house and shit to look good, and then take that shit right on back to the bank. If you got any sense, you will. I'm not throwing <laughs> No, I'm not doing that. You feel what I'm saying? How much did you take out for that video? Do you remember? I'm not giving disclosures. Not, discl not disclosing Man, that listen, way. I still live in Sherwood. I got to be cool now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not moving. <laughs> but, I, but I will say it's more than most people make for okay. a while. You know? But it was fun. And it, that was, what, over 20 years ago, right? That video? Uh, to, I, th I think I put that... Uh, video out in 2010. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I mean, years. and then it was a lot of hoopla wrapping around it and stuff. Some people were talking about, you remember that big armor truck robbery? And, no, 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 no. Mine came out of the bank. I <laughs> just motherfucker legally. They thought they saw the business case. out. Yeah, I was like, nah, because like, everybody was talking about that big robbery in uh, Columbia. It was a big armor truck robbery. And they were like, no, no, mine came out of the bank. And back into the bank. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Yeah. You know, ain't no, I don't wear ski masks. Hmm. I don't do none of that shit. Yeah. I keep it pimping. I keep it looking nice, you know. Church. The next record I want to ask you about is that fire in Florida and the controversy that surrounded that record. All right, yeah. Uh, that song was about the disenfranchisement of the Florida votes because I do have a, uh, hmm. an attachment with the community. And I went to bed, they said go one. Smell like, smell like. Ooh, that's crazy, man. Smell like candy. But anyway. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, uh, You wanna smell this? This I don't yeah, somebody gotta smell it. This is What does it smell like? This is crazy, yo. Yeah. We don't have a scratch and sniff TV. Can man, you describe this is crazy, it? Man. <laughs> well anyway, like Black I said, don't smoke, so. No, I don't smoke. I only drink. That's why I don't give a damn how many piss tests I take. You got something in the cup? You got something in the cup? I'm drinking it, yeah, I got it. What you got in there? Uh, I don't want to discuss. It, it, <laughs> undisclosed. It's, 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 a, it's an undisclosed drink, <laughs> and, it's, it, and you need it. <laughs> but yeah, fire in Florida got me banned in Florida. I mean, like, my money wasn't even no good there. What up, Ben? What, what you mean by that? What I mean is, after I cut the video for uh, fire in Florida, and it was talking about Janet Reno, Jeb Bush, and everything else, and I was talking about the, how they threw out all the votes in Jacksonville, Florida, to where they, they were finding votes, it's like 75,000 votes in the dumpster and all this other type of crap. So it was a big, the, 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 the 2000 presidential election, you gotta remember, Bush became the first court-appointed president because of this. It, he was appointed by the Florida Supreme Court, 
not. And, and by your brother being the governor, uh, Jeb Bush, brother, I, cre I created all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You start doing that, the, that political money and the way- rabble rouser. Yeah, but I, I was a true speaker. I right. didn't lie. Right. And that's on, like I said- How I, come you don't want for city council of Jackson? Well, I mean, I don't know how they're going to feel about it. Saying, well, wasn't he a pimp at one time? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People have a tendency to be no, very man, cruel. I, don't. I feel like some of these politicians are already <laughs> wanting they to are, be they pimps. Pimping shit. You, the same type of shit. <laughs> yeah. They're just pimping, pimping out Us. other people. You know what yeah, I'm our money, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, like, you could be, you really could, you, you, you'd probably be city councilor and then move up to mayor if you try to, you know what I'm saying? You got it in you. Well. Thank you, man. You know what? See, <laughs> that's what I mean about this guy. He's constantly yeah, you need giving. some friends like that. Right? <laughs> Listen, I, man. It's my it, dog, man. Yeah. He called me. He's going to be your course, running man. mate now. There you go. Listen, now that, that's if he gets the president. <laughs> but no, real, no, no, no bullshit. So we be on the road and motherfuckers be like, it could be like a cat gets stuck in a tree or something. Now I can get a call. Little cat's fucking <laughs> He's telling the truth. The dog will get fucking hit by a car. Well, not like, I think Miss, Miss Shirley's dog got hit by the car. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, that just um, happened. Not like, we ain't seen uh, so and so's daughter. Oh, let me call. It's, He's a uh, man of the people, huh? Yeah, so why not? Why not be in, in the, even no bullshit? Why not? Why not represent them? You know what I'm saying? You know? For real, I wouldn't yeah, want to right. get in politics one day. I wouldn't give a fuck about the past. Past the past. Yeah. The people that you represent, everybody got a past. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You know, man, you a good dude, you know. I, right. I say that shit all I'm, the motherfucking time. I'm fair time. for a square. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. No, it's the truth, man. I, I, that's why I be like, I'm fucking with you. I don't give a damn. You want? <laughs> you know what I'm good, saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm rolling. Too. That's why I'm here. They say this. I'm gonna represent. Sit on the porch and smoke. Let's go. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? See how I ended up in Detroit? And I said, fuck this shit. We going, nigga. We going to Eminem's restaurant, nigga. We going. And I'm going to be flying the motherfucker. Yeah. Did you really steal the sign for Mom's Spaghetti? No, I put it back. Oh, you did put it back. OK. Because, <laughs> well, you know, you, no, no telling what happens off, off the camera rolls, you know? You nah, might just put it right no back. Might have really drove off had, with it. We didn't have no room in, in, the, in the van for it. Plus, I didn't want the, the, the sign. I mean, if I, you know, if I was driving back home, it would have been a good load piece for the crib. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, that would have been dope. Would you put it in the kitchen? Like, I would get it back to the crib, you know what I'm saying? So I just put it back. Yeah. It wasn't, it's entertainment, man. Everybody takes shit all serious and yeah. shit like hip hop, rap, um, going back and forth. It's, it's supposed to be competitive too. That's how, that's how hip hop started. Mm -hmm. Hip hop started, no matter what, if there's two rappers, that's probably the most competitive thing, even more than sports. Yes. It's rapping. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be the greatest, the number one. Everybody want to have all the bitches. Everybody want, you know what I'm saying? So it really is like that. When really, everybody should just, when music is hard for a person to be number one, because if a song's dope, a song's dope. Everybody got dope songs, then we all win. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? Hip hop's always been about battling, competition, so it ain't. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like somebody was going down there for violence or anything like that. It was, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, that's what it's like today. Well, a lot of these back well, and forth. A lot of the younger up. rappers. Yeah, 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 like the new generation. Yeah, yeah that ain't us, man. You know what I'm saying? We raising. Back in the day, if niggas had beef, niggas, it, you would see, the only times you would see niggas from out of town if it was like that Jack the Rapper or Peter Thomas's How Can I Be Down in Miami where they had these events where all the rappers would come together. It wasn't on internet, so you really didn't know these niggas. So, so back then, niggas would just fight. There was a lot of like 20 on 30 fights, you know what I'm saying? I'm just sure. brawls, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of them, been involved with a lot of them, with artists that you know, well-known artists. That, that happened a lot. It was very rare. I mean, shooting happened, mm -hmm. but not like it was today where everything yeah. is gonna be settled on, we gonna kill you, then rap about it. And that's, that's that's not just fucking up hip hop. That's really fucking up the culture. Oh yeah, you know yeah. because it's to the point where the kids want to, um, and I can say kids, young adults, like they young adults, want to. Uh, they looking that as a badge of honor, and they're looking that as um, as something that's going to be looked upon as you know 
good or dope, but in all actuality, that shit is gonna, you know what I'm saying? Because it's hard to beat charges when you're on the internet rapping and mm -hmm. then now they're using what you're rapping about against you because in the videos, the shit that you're saying got the same nigga that might have got into some trouble with you years ago. And they, right now, they make it easy by just watching the internet. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, niggas just gotta stop making it easy for them. Everything don't have to be on the internet. Although I know everybody's lives is really asphyxiated with the internet, but it's, when it gets to the point where it's gonna get you in, in jail or locked up or in trouble or dead, then it's not worth it. You, you gotta think like, okay, not everything is for the internet. Mm -hmm. Because back then there was no internet. Niggas would just, they would see niggas like, oh shit, they're them niggas at the event, and they'd be fights, and they have a bunch of niggas, we have a bunch of niggas, and then it'd just be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now it's <laughs> immediately. Yep. Yeah. And you, you know what? Just uh, to clarify what he was talking about, like if I see a. <laughs> sprinkle him with some game. Like um, one of the young rappers in Jacksonville, his name was, what, Fulio? Yeah. Before he. I think it was before he started making a name for himself. And he hard too. Yeah, I reached out to him. I sent him some money, even though I'm the OG. You know what I'm saying? And I did a song with him called Bridge This Gap because I really wanted to bridge that gap the way he was going at. Because like, if you'd have lived through the Tupac and Big Air, and you'd have seen all this stuff and you know things of that nature, I already knew what's when what was going to go down in Jacksonville. Because you know what I'm saying, especially when. The news is playing a part in it, you know what I'm saying? I, I watched it, how things used to go when uh, it was the East Coast, West Coast war and all the other crap, you know what I'm saying? And see, like, I can't tell a man how to run his business, I can't tell a man how to live, but I can drop, I can sprinkle you with some game and back up from it, you know what I'm saying? That's why when I did the video and the song with the young brother bef before he became who he is now, because I think I, I recorded that in 2016 or 17, and put it on the album with uh, Project Pat and Sean Paul and a bunch of other ones. You know what I'm saying? But I, w I was doing my part then without saying something. Cause I, yeah. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. You know what I'm saying? Especially if that's how you feeding your, your family and your kids and all the other type of stuff. I'm not gonna get in the way of that. I'm gonna just sprinkle you and, and back up. If you, you know get to our age and, and really like, um, it's, easy, it's easy to grab the young niggas, especially when you're in the spot, like grab the young niggas and have, and have them and guide them in a way and take advantage of just because they looking up to you and take advantage of that and have them doing like, you know, crash out shit, mm -hmm. then that's, that's, that's one of the worst things you could do. You know what I'm saying? If you're not gonna do the right thing, then don't fuck with them at all. If you're not gonna give them some type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause a lot of guys, they just, you know, we all lived through it and, and luckily we survived it, still trying to survive it. But I'm saying if we got through those years and we know where the landmines at, then why not be able to, then we're qualified to tell somebody in them streets and say, look, here goes the landmines. And this way here, your ass don't gonna get, you ain't gonna get blown up. You know what I'm saying? If you listen, you know what I mean? Like, like, but if you're just like, yeah, come on here, take these guns here, take this and take this and, you know what I'm saying? See, I, I, I don't wanna be a hypocrite because that's how I came up, but at some point, when you get older, you have to draw the line and be like, all right, fuck all that. That don't count anymore. I don't care what they think. I don't care if they say, but you, that don't matter. This is the, this is, you, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't. I, I could only give you, talk to a young guy and, and, and applaud him if he's doing great or if he's still in the streets somehow, then somehow give him a different perspective. No, that's real shit, yeah. yeah. Hey, we, we the OGs now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, send some positive vibes back. Matter of fact, that's why I did uh, uh, the song with uh, Mikhail Muhammad, the uh, Nubians United for uh, Self-Defense out of Jacksonville, Florida, previously the uh, spokesman for the New Black Panther Party. We did the song on Positive Vibes because every album I drop, I try to put something positive on there because I want them to understand that you got to live. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and with the shoot 'em up bang, bang, you got to think about, you know what I'm saying? You're not really teaching your ops a lesson because if he gets shot, he's not going to learn anything. He's not going to live anymore. It's, it's over, you know what I'm saying? It's not like you're getting a, a, a whooping or, or you done got out there and fought and joke and punched in the eye and then next week after you done, your eye done swole, it ain't swole no more, y'all can go speak. 
you know what I'm saying, it's over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if we're going to be people, we need to be people that understand people and, and realize that nobody's perfect. People don't think the same. And if, if you're going to make a difference, you're going to make a difference. And I'm doing my job. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just want the best for my city of Jacksonville. I don't want, I don't want to hear about 12, and that's why you got to run for city council. <laughs> It don't even make sense, man. I'm telling you, I help you. Like I, I've, um, my girl, my girl Ashley got a cousin that just ran for city councilor here in Atlanta. Her name is Kiosha Bell. She won, but before that, as she was running, it's the first time I ever did this. I went door to door for her, right? Really? Yeah, I did about like 20 doors. Me, me and my girl, and um, then we was on uh, Old National, Old Nat. I had walking up and down with the bullhorn and. That was the first time I've ever done that. And I've always been interested in politics. It's always been a side of me that was interesting. The thing about politics is that like, politics is, 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 is crazy to me because like, let's say that you're wrong, all the way wrong, but because you're a part of the Republicans, they don't, they're gonna find an excuse for you when they do it, or they're gonna just change the subject. So it's like, when all these years of looking at politics, it's like, damn, I'm saying all it is is like motherfuckers be fucked up and lying or shit be, or something be wrong with them and they'll gloss over it. So it's like, you really ain't for the truth. And I'm for truth. So I know if I was to get into politics, it would be good for the people. And I don't know if that's good to stay in politics because I, I, it, it works different up there, but I just don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? So I know Natalac would probably win city council, especially if I come down there and help you campaign. Like, I know you would win. It don't even take as many votes as you think. Hmm. 600 votes. You could probably win the city council. Six. Hmm. If you can't get 600 fucking people to vote for you, then your ass need to move. Move. Get the fuck out the city, yo. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, give it some thought. Yeah. Like, we about to wrap it up, man. Do you want to uh, give any shout outs here uh, before we end this? Oh, yeah. I want to. I gotta give the, the, the shout out to the to my bottom that's actually running the running the house. Shout out to Tiffany, you know, give her a shout out her flowers. Shout out to the girl that's working on my taxes. Shout out to uh, uh, Denise out of uh, Lamar, South Carolina. Shout out to Vaughn and David, my brother, or my oldest brother, Lawton Edward Davis Jr. Um, let's see. Shout out to the city of Jacksonville, the people that uh, that love me, and and uh, and I know you're gonna learn something after I jump off this porch. You know what I'm saying? You, never, you know, because these people see me every day. You know what I'm saying? And they never realize who they're talking to. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I sprinkle them with some game or whatever. I I don't know. I hey. All I can say is I'm gonna put my best foot forward. I I, I love people. You know, even if you don't love me, I love you. You know, shout out to all the girls that's working for me or against me or with me or without me. Hey, daddy still loves you. Church. Shout out to uh, Professor Hotester, who should have came, but he, he got tied up. And shout out to uh, Mikhail Muhammad that should have been here, but he hurt his foot or something or broke it. it was, I forget what happened to him. Yeah, sure. but, uh, but either way it go, I'm good. Dependable, supportive. <laughs> Listen, man. I like get, that. Dependable. Dependable, supportive. Fuck, I'm right. Listen, that's. Be, I don't Damn care right. what nobody say. I'm Can't nobody saying that. Dependable. Dependable. You see him on the porch. Like like hefty trash bags. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I'm right. Dude, hey man, love this guy. Shout out to Nori who told me to. And you say, listen, you you look up for my friend Zeno. Uh -huh. I said, man, I, 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 listen, hey, I love the man too. I, 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 we good. It's all good, lad. All right. Oh, yeah. It's all good. I'm here for you. Someone always got something to say. Is he gay? Is he real about what he say? Is his taxes paid? Did he go 